Murphy. I have a company, Silk Fence Incorporated. And uh, we've been in business for about 11 years and uh, we do a lot of silk fence installation. We're installers. We do other things also, but today we're going to concentrate and focus on the proper installation of silk fencing type A or type 1 and type 2 uh, or type B as I refer to it and a secondary uh, sediment control barrier which is hay bales and proper installation of those. Due to the timing that we have to do this, we've already set up a section of each one of these here and uh, I'll talk with you uh, a little bit about that uh, installation. As I say, we've been in business for uh, 11 years. I'm a C-SPEC certified professional in erosion sediment control in the state of Alabama. I have my QCIP uh, license uh, also. And uh, we work mainly in the Birmingham area, that we do throughout the state. We do a lot of work for residential areas. We work with commercial sites. We work with uh, development. Uh, we work with highways, roads, utility companies, pipelines, and things such. And uh, anyway, our, our best references, to give a little plug here, we'll move on, is, is regulatory agencies. But uh, silt fences, uh, we'll get, get to here. Uh, they are commonly placed at intervals on disturbed slopes or adjacent to streams and ponds, and they, they have a low, lower failure rate than what hay bales do and uh, they're used for slope protection and around ditches and around storm drains. You know, now the purpose of silt fencing, as you can see over here and stuff, it's to hold back the sediment long enough to detain the water and the sediment to drop. And uh, occasionally it can maybe be used to divert water to certain locations. Maybe you've seen a, a fence at the top of the slope and you wonder why have they got that at the higher elevations. A lot of times that's to divert water from your disturbed site below and divert it to the sides of your property or adjacent sides. And at the, at the least, silt fence should maintain or hold the, the large particles back long enough to, to keep them off, to keep them on your site and out of the streets and the drains, drains and the clean water. Uh, virtually is these fences, we pick a good location of where it should be on the property. A lot of times, you know, it's, it's near the perimeter of the property if you're doing a, a residential site. But uh, the location is important, and one of the main things first before you start digging, as any utility people here will tell you, is to get your utilities marked. Because that, that there can slow your progress down and also interfere with uh, a lot of uh, the neighbors around you. Which, uh, don't think too kindly when they're out of power. But uh, this here fence here is what we call a uh, type B fence or a class 2 fence. It's a standard fence that's used a lot on res residential sites. And uh, to start with, we dig a trench at least six inches in depth, which you can see here uh, as you walk by it. It's got to be at least six inches, and it's usually by the uh, cut of our trencher at six inches wide. And uh, the post or drove into the ground to the level. There's a red line at the bottom here as there is at the top. We drive the post in the bottom of the ground until that red line is at the bottom of the uh, trench. And that way it's got a flap on it that you can turn that flap out that when you're backfilling it, you backfill over that flap. And that way it traps the water. The water can't go under the fence. It's got to go through the fence or it'll uh, uh, around it if you don't turn it up on the ends. And that's a lot of times you'll see that on properties. They'll have a straight line fence along the property, but it'll just hit the fence and run down the end of the fence and then out into the street. So turn these ends up where necessary or around the driveways or wherever the, the uh, erosion or the uh, flow of the water is, is to be maintained and kept, kept on your property. And usually you turn it up far enough that the top of this fence here even with that bottom of that fence there. Then that way you have to trap the water and hold it back long enough and do it on the contours when you're putting it in. Try to do it on the contour of your, of your property. Too many times, you, if you get too many curves and stuff in it, you'll get blowouts. 
And one of the main things about fences, after you get them up, you're not done with them, it's maintaining the fences. And that, uh, you are to uh, clear a fence out when it gets halfway full. You need to come in halfway to the height of this here. There are many accumulations and many spots here that you've got collections of, to move it out. The majority of fences aren't, don't have that problem. They're more abused than they are filled up. They're run over. Uh, they are, uh, uh, use them, uh, or uh, they're abused uh, in a lot of ways. So you pretty well got to stay on target with it and communicate it with uh, a lot of your people that's working for you, or the people in and, in and on and out of your property and stuff for the purpose of the fences and stuff. The regulatory agencies are, uh, are getting uh, more involved in, in this year as the years have been through. From the last we started in the year 2000, there, it's, there's a lot more emphasis placed on this uh, installations than uh, what they were when we first started. Now, moving over here to the uh, class one fence or type A fence, this here installation requires the same thing as a trench, with at least a 12 inch or a six inch in depth, six inches wide. But over here we have a sturdier fence with, we got different uh, steel posts that we drive in anymore from 14 to 18 inches. And that varies from maybe what type of soil you're in or rock you're in. Uh, of the depth that you can uh, get these in. The ideal location is 16, 17, 18 inches. You drive that and you put the post in the back of the trench. Uh, this being the flow side, you put it in the back. And no more on these posts, no more than 10 foot apart is the maximum. And after you get your post in, no more than 10 foot apart, you attach a wire. Which you can see over here, there's a woven wire. It's either a 14 to 12 gauge wire. A lot of times the residential site is 14 gauge, you get into other areas of uh, high pressure and intensities and stuff, 12 gauge is used. But we attach it, we stretch this wire tight where it's not loose. And we get that on, we attach this fabric, which is similar to that fabric there, or you can get it in a felt type of fabric too. We attach it to the wire. And uh, try to get it as tight. And I mean, take the time with it. You take your time and do it right the first time, it'll pay off for you. Without having to replace it or come back and continue to maintain it. And uh, after you've done your wire, your post, your wire, your fabric, the biggest thing is is backfilling on both of them. It's the backfill of the wire, the fabric down here, it goes in the bottom of the trench, you can do a right angle and bring it out. So when you're backfilling, you're putting material on top of this fabric, and on top of that wire. That way it traps the water that you can't go through it. it has to go through the fabric and not around it or under it. If it ever gets a chance to get under it, it'll continue to erode and it'll all disappear on your neighbor's property or in the street.